Nice. Right, at the inside of Minardi. Here we go. Oh, I don't know which way to go. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome along to the Traction YouTube channel. Now recently we have been inundated with new R Factor 2 content. First of all we had the BMW M4 Class 1 which is based on what the DTM cars would have been had it not been for the GT3 regulation change. And we also had the Cathedral of Speed Monza added to the R Factor 2 track list. Now these weren't the only two things to be added because on the 1st of July we were also given the Formula Pro car. Now this is a new fantasy single seater, it's fictional but it is grounded in real life data and it's currently in a kind of shakedown state, but the final version of the car should be released before the end of July. Now we've already seen the likes of the Dallara IR01 and iRacing and we know Raceroom will also be releasing its own Formula car variant as well. However, the Formula Pro car has been designed to effectively mimic the new F1 2022 regulations. Literally, if you look up what the FIA are saying the Formula 1 2022 cars will look like, you're basically looking at a Formula Pro. It's pretty awesome. Now there is one big difference and that is the power unit. Now this thing doesn't have a fancy modern hybrid power unit, it has a good old fashioned 800 horsepower V10 internal combustion engine, kind of like what you would expect in Formula 1 between 1995 and 2005. It's actually quite similar in some ways to the Dallara IR01's engine as well. Now if you want to get your hands on this car yourself, you can purchase it through the Steam store. It will currently cost you £4.27 for the car alone, or you can purchase the Formula Pro pack for just under £21, which includes not only the Formula Pro car, but also Spa, Monza and the Nürburgring. There is even a place to race these cars in a competitive online environment, as Studio 397 have announced the 2021 Formula Pro and Formula Challenge series, both of which will be streamed live on the Traction channel, starting with Formula Pro on the 19th of July at Spa, and you can actually enter yourselves at home through the online R Factor 2 competition system. If you want more information, make sure you click on the link in the description down below. But all I'm saying is if you love this car, don't waste your opportunity and get entering. Now the question for this video is, do I love the car? I'm basically gonna be giving you my first impressions to try and give you an idea of what you can expect from this beast when you drive it yourself. Now because it's kind of based on future F1 events, I'm gonna take it to what is a, essentially a future F1 circuit, Zandvoort. Let's jump in. Okay, so first of all, we are going to select uh, Zandvoort, and it's going to be Zandvoort 2020 version 2.27. You can see here we've got Formula Pro, and there it is, with a nice traction branding on the side of it as well. We love that. So this car is currently in version 0 0.95, which is the shakedown thing I was talking about earlier. But I am informed we do have a traction livery available. There we are. What an absolute beauty that one is, number 55. Gonna do a qualifying session to get a feel for it and then a little race against the AI at the end with all these general settings. In terms of opponents, we're gonna have 14 AI drivers and everything on 100%. Let's give this a go. I don't really drive single seaters on R Factor 2 very often at all. I don't know if it's gonna feel really modern or if the engine's gonna make it feel a little bit old school. That's us loaded in then. We're gonna wait for the green light to come on. We'll just start on default car setup. I might make some changes in a little bit, but I just wanna get a flavor for what it's like on the default. I'll take out a little bit of fuel though, because we're in qualifying. Oh, it's a good sound. We've got anti-stall, that's quite interesting. So I really do need to use the clutch properly in this car. We're going to get at the pit lane now. This is going to take a little bit of learning, both the car and the track. We're going to have cold tyres and stuff, so I will take it nice and easy to get up to speed. Now I'm also running all my assists and stuff off as well, so I've got no traction control, no anti-lock brakes. We'll see how we get on with it. I might make some adjustments if we need to later on. Let's get out there and, and get a feel for this car. Right, on the power. It's properly shouty. It's quick. 800 horsepower, you can really, really tell straight away. Just an instant delivery of it as well. Bit of a twitch through there. Now I'm running my steering rotation in the profiler at about 540 degrees, which I think should match up quite nicely with the car from what I've seen. And it feels like it is so far, so I'd recommend going with something like that to start off with. Now I don't have any fancy direct drive wheel setup or fancy load cell pedals, so it's going to be trying to get a feel for it with this Logitech setup that's going to be key, I think, to what the experience is. But so far, so good, to be honest. I'm just trying to put some temperature into the tyres. It's already feeling really good. We've got DRS as well. We'll open that up down the straight. We're going to reach 200 just before the braking zone, are we? Not quite, 199. Bit of a lock up on the way in, missed the apex, and oh, yeah, I still need to get a little bit more temperature in these tyres. Just the way that Formula 1 cars demolish the Zandvoort track is ridiculous. So used to driving like GT cars and touring cars around here. The single seaters just pretend the track's not there. Okay, we're into the curb this time, no bother. Back on the power. 
Ooh, missed the apex there. So really, it doesn't act like a, you know the car would on the likes of F1 2020 or 2021 probably, where the Formula 1 car just dives in and you've got so much front grip, you really do need to kind of work with it a little bit. So in that sense, I guess it feels a little bit more old school. Forgetting to open DRS. Right, let's try and do a slightly faster lap, shall we? Oh, no, mucked up already. And we're into the gravel in turn one. Scrap that idea. Bit of instant heat into the rears, we like that. Right, with the DRS open so early, can we make 200 miles an hour before we max out in the default? Just about. Big lock up on the way in front and rear. Rear first, then the fronts went, I believe. Oh, on the power too early, and that's a big shunt. Clearly, the acceleration and everything, you do really need to manage this car. It's not something you can just throw around and expect to grip up. Like, you have to drive it and really work at it, especially without the assists on. I've come out of the session just so I can bump up the AI a little bit because it looks like I was quite quickly going to full position there and I don't want that. We'll bump the strength up to 105 and hopefully that'll be a little bit more challenging for the for the race. Okay, out of the pits again. I'm thinking I might try the ABS settings on as well just to see how the car reacts when I can actually push into the corners a little bit more. Just try and generate some heat on this outlap. That's not how I intended to generate the heat. Thank God for anti-stall, by the way. I tell you what, it is properly a handful, this car. Like, it's not easy to accelerate out the corners and just give it a bootful because you, it will definitely bite you. There's just so much instant power delivery. It's really not that smooth, which makes it huge fun to drive, albeit a bit more challenging. Let's try and attack this braking zone then with a bit of ABS assistance. Transforms the braking zone. I still went in a little bit too deep. It makes it a lot more manageable. How much downforce have we got through here? Uh, reasonable amount, but you can just hear the tires scrubbing. I couldn't have gone too much quicker through there, I don't think, on this setup. Oh, on the bump. Oh, that's not good. Really not going to do my tires any favour there. So that was just me opening DRS early and hitting a bump at the wrong point. And the car would just let go instantly. This car is taking no prisoners whatsoever in terms of getting up to speed. It's just going to bite you and it's your job to rein it in and just try and get a handle of it before it frustrates you too much. Thankfully I'm, I've got lots of experience with difficult cars to drive and kind of overcoming that initial barrier but I can imagine this would be very frustrating for people with a heavy right foot. Cool. Oh, car coming out of the pits. I almost said hello to them. Now they're going to block me as well. Gamesmanship going on. Let's use that opportunity then to pull into the pits and maybe try something different with the setup. Now I have been sent one of the pro setups that was used during the inauguration event at Spa, so I'm going to give that a go. Although it was for Spa, so I've added a little bit of wing to compensate, taking the gear ratios down slightly. So we'll see how it behaves, but I'm just curious to see uh, what it feels like with a bit of setup development. The car instantly feels more engaged on this setup. Ooh, a bit more turning over steer, which I wasn't really having problems with before. It was more the exit. Okay, line up for another fast lap then. Coming out of the banking. Let's see what kind of speed we can get here. Instantly, we're going to go over 200. Yeah, way better top speed. Brake a bit earlier as well, just to be safe. Oh, that was too early. Okay, the brakes seem to be better as well. Oh, yeah, much better traction out of the corners as well. So instantly, this is having an effect on the overall grip levels. A bit more confidence with the car break later into this one. No, there's the oversteer on the turn in. Just caught me out a bit, but I'm 1.3 up as you can see. It's instantly going to be about two seconds clear and it should put me straight up to pole position, I think. There we go. Open the DRS through here. Scared, scared. Try and keep it open through here. No, I had to lift. Oh, that is nerve wracking. There's a challenge for you. Try and do that bit flat out with DRS open. Down towards the chicane. Looks like we've got another bit of time improvement here. Seven tenths up beginning to get to grips with this car a little bit. It does take some time, as I keep saying, and you've just got to be careful, as you can see there on the exit. Nowhere near enough grip to be able to give it a bit full. Watch the bump here, open the DRS, and we found another six tenths or so. But, I mean, that's me in the 115s, probably 114s. I'm expecting 
when this gets to the Pro Series, you know, we're probably going to be looking at 110s and stuff like that. That's the session over anyway for me. I'm going to park up there. Wow, what an experience. It's really, really good fun. You have to concentrate, though. It's pretty tough to do commentary and drive this thing hard at the same time. It really is. I'm going to bump them up again a little bit in difficulty. We'll take a guess at 107 for this one, just to be safe. Um, we're going to make it a five-lap race, and let's start right near the back. So let's give this a try. It really does feel a little bit like a slightly old F1 car, like going back a few years. It doesn't have that insane amount of downforce that the modern cars have in 2020, 2021, etc. It's a weird one though because I can't quite, my head, my brain can't really wrap itself around what this feels like in terms of comparing it to other Formula 1 cars. It's a bit like, you know, someone nowadays are taking a 1990s chassis, bolted loads of aero on it, stuck some new parts on it, new brakes and stuff, and said, right, off you go. It is hard to define, but I, yeah, really, really good fun. I mean, especially when you think about it, the fact that it's under a fiver. It, if you like your single seaters, I'm already saying you should get it, but I'm going to see how it now races against the AI. Right then, let's do this. Standing start in the Formula Pro. I can't even see the lights because the halo's in the way. There we go, we can see the fifth light. Bit of a tricky start with wheel spin, but we're underway. We'll open the DRS. Oh no, we can't open the DRS. Okay, so that is different in qualifying to what it is in a race, which is good to see. Not going to make any moves in the first corner. So we clearly have actual DRS zones then for the racing, which is good. Kind of need to learn what they are at Zanvert. Oh, we're going to slow down. Everyone's bunched up a little bit. Nowhere to go in terms of making progress. We'll try an inside line here, but you've got to be so careful for that reason. And I'm around. It's, it's brutal, guys. It's absolutely brutal. Let's try that one again. Now we're going to be a bit... Oh, contact on the inside. I was a little bit more aggressive in turn one. I'm going to go around the outside of quite a few of them. That's much more like it. Up to P13. We've got to be more careful in the traction zones. The AIs tend to have more traction in traction zones in most games, and R-Factor 2 is not really too different to that. Oh, I need to get heat in these tyres. Avoid any incidents. Oh, someone's on the kerbs and off the track. We'll use that to our advantage. Sneak down the inside. Up into 12th position, 11th position. Careful on the power. There we go. Now, it'd be interesting to see how the... Oh, I've been spun. No, I've been hit. Get it together. That was rude. There's the DRS zone, but it doesn't seem to be active yet, so... Anyway, back to square one. We're in last again. Oh, contact again from the AI. I'm going to sneak down the inside. Oh, it's very, very close. <laughs> oh, that was terrifying. We don't have any DRS, but I'm going to stay to the inside. We seem to have a better straight line speed. We've got the setup. And I can brake nice and late. Get some tyre temperature going. Missed the apex again slightly, so we're still not quite there. Okay, we'll keep it flat through here. Let's see what they do. If they slow up a bit, they do. I'm going to sneak to the inside. That's a good move. Watch the grass, though. Use the aero to our advantage through here. You can. That's probably the, the fastest corner on this track where you can really feel the aero working. And to be fair, at high speed, it does feel pretty good. It's, oh, I've been hit on exactly the same corner by what looks like exactly the same driver. How rude. Right, one more restart. I'm not putting up with that anymore. Clearly the AI on 100% stre on 100% aggression, I should say. Don't really care too much for you in that section. I don't think they care too much for each other as well, to be honest, looking at the aggressive nature of their driving. Oh, and there's an example. They've all binned it. Let's sneak through. Almost binned it myself, but that's P11. That deals with all of those guys, I guess. I feel like this is a go-kart race. Oh, I've got a traction teammate in the race as well. I'm going to sneak down the inside as everyone's coming together there. That's P11 still, though. But we've caught right up, which is what we need. Oh! Right, down the inside of Minardi. Here we go. Oh, I don't know which way to go. <laughs> My adrenaline is running right now. I'm going to have to back out of that one because that was terrifying. We're going to... Give our teammate a little bit of a nudge through, try and help them along. Come on. Oh, contact on the exit. I've decided I don't like 100% aggression on our factor 2. I'm going to do one more attempt, and I'm going to lower the aggression. And then everyone's going to play nice, okay? Okay, we're going to tone that down to 85%. This is the one. I'm not going to be taken for a mug this time. Pretty atrocious start as per usual. We'll stick to the outside line, because I definitely trust that in turn one. It seems to be a bit safe. You can roll the car in, use a little bit of that mechanical grip that it has. We're still in last place, though. Try and follow this car into here. The traction teammate seems to have dropped a few position by the looks of it. Ooh. Seems to lift a little bit in the exit. 
now we're going to have a look. I'm going to get squeezed in here. I've got to break nice and early. Car's coming from behind. Oh, my teammate's been hit out wide, but he's made it stick. I'll sneak through. Oh, there's still a car there as well. Good racing, this. Bit tense, but there we go. Again, someone looking down the inside. I've been hit. Even on 85% aggression, I've been hit. Come on. See, once the AI string out a little bit, their pace isn't actually too bad on this difficulty, so it does make it tricky to make positions after the first few laps, but I'm going to try. We'll move down the inside of the chicane. Bit of contact. I'm trying to keep it out of the way of them, but we've got a better exit position. Although I didn't actually get the traction. I've still got the inside line. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Run you out wide. And it's P14. You know, I think the thing that's making it tricky is with, you know, a lot of AI cars in close proximity on a tight circuit like Zandvoort, even though the racing's very exciting and good and you can have some good battles, it's just a little bit frenetic. You know, the cars are moving around a lot, very quick movements, hard to react in time, and you've kind of got to give them all a very wide berth. Or just bump the, you know, the aggression down a little bit more than I did. Oh, thank you. Teammates holding everyone up for me. This gives me a chance. The car in front of me has got DRS, but I've got better straight line speed with this setup. We're going to go down the inside. Oh, I've hit my teammate a little bit, but we just about got away with it. Oh, they've done a cutback on me. It's glorious from Kingsley. We'll try and go around the outside here. Contact up ahead. We'll stay to the inside. Nice short shift to third to get traction. Run them out wide. Ah, oh, they've still got a good exit, though. Look at that. This is actually really good now. I do think a bigger circuit would be better for racing, but even in Zandvoort, you know, I don't think we'll see too many overtakes in the Grand Prix here. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but... I don't think it'll be the best for overtaking, and yet with these cars in this game, it seems pretty frenetic. Look at that, another switch back. I'm on the outside, which will lead to the inside, so we'll try and stick it out, but they've got so much speed, and I'm actually under threat now for 13th. Let's dive down the inside again, avoid the teammate. Might actually make two moves here by accident. If we can stay on the left, we've got DRS. Just going to stay away from everyone, hope I f find a position. No, careful. Oh, a, this is crazy, this is. Right, one last go, run the outside. Use a bit of aggression, a bit of contact, but I don't care about that right now. We'll stick to the outside. I think that's it, guys. P12, our teammate's going to hold us up. Oh! Forced into the wall, the exit, and it's now going to be a five-way battle. And this is, is this Mo 3? Is this Formula 1, or is it Mo 3? Oh, no. Back down to 14th, I cannot believe it. I'm still battling with the same car, by the way, the kind of the red and white default livery. We've been battling the whole time. Kingsley it is. Very bold. You would never make that move in real life, but that's what we're going to have to do here. To pick up some late positions. I've got my teammate right in front of me. I've made a few more positions. Block them off in the exit. That's P11 again. I would not be racing like this online. Do not, don't worry. Oh, my teammate's cut me off a little bit. We've got the DRS though, or the rear flap I should say. Unless we can get a good exit here, we're not going to beat our teammate, but I'm going to give it my best shot. I've got more straight line speed, you know it still could happen, DRS open. Come on, can we beat them? They can run me to the wall. Yes! P10, into the points, ahead of the teammate. We did what we set out to do, and actually finished the race. But wow, that was not easy to finish, trust me. Just to summarise my thoughts on this car then, um, I actually really, really enjoyed that. It was a bit too crazy, but as I said, bigger circuit, I think you could race really well. You've got a nice balance of aero grip versus mechanical grip. Obviously, with the anti-lock brakes on, it's really good in the brakes. With them off, you're going to struggle a little bit unless you've got a really, really good brake pedal and some amazing talent as well. Um, it's very easy to lock up. So, But that's kind of an R Factor 2 thing as much of a specific car thing. The thing sounds amazing. It drives really well and it's functional. The DRS works really well in the races. It's All in all, it's honestly just a huge amount of fun. And... Um, yeah, I mean, for the price of the car on its own, I'd say it's definitely, definitely good value. So guys, that is going to be me for today. But as I was saying, make sure you check out the link in the description to find out more about not only how you can get the car, but also how you can get involved with the incredible Formula Challenge and Formula Pro series. I've had a blast, as always, making these videos. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope it's helped you decide whether or not you want to spend the money on the Formula Pro car. Highly recommend it. I know I usually say that, but it's genuine. Hope you all have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.